Now, it's sometimes said that art records what the history books cannot, giving us a sense of how it may have felt to have lived through a particular moment in time, helping us to understand the past. It also allows us to question the official narrative of historical events. Our guest for today's perspective combines sculpture, collage, and video to explore the consequences of dominant power structures and colonialist atrocities. Hairline Crack, a dialogue by visual artist Neve McCann is on display at the Irish Cultural Center here in Paris. As part of its program celebrating Ireland's 50 years as a member of the European Union, she joins me now uh, in the studio. Neve, thank you so much for being here. Can you start by just talking about the idea behind this exhibition? Um, it really began as a kind of emotional excavation of the relationship to the bordering edge between North and South and Ireland as a Dubliner and a Southern Irelander, Ireland person. It's almost like it wasn't meant to be present in your world and yet it had deep consequences for emotionally and therefore in all the artifacts and objects one has around me and I just decided to actually address that directly within this work. And it really questions dominant power structures and the consequences mm -hmm. of, of colonialism, uh, as some might say, uh, in Ireland. Can you talk us through maybe some of the pieces in the show? I know at one point maybe we saw it, uh, you feature an eyeless dog uh, sort of wandering around mm -hmm. the corner. That's a, a video piece called Hairline Crack in the particular section showing in Centre Culturel Irlandais is um, a vignette. And there's an eyeless dog, Colin, who is wandering the aisles of the Natural History Museum in in Dublin. So he's overseen by these stuffed animals, but also has this narrative of musings on borders and man's hubristic content. And it's quite a moving image of this dog without eyes who's wandering and overseen by these other dead animals as a superstructure of colonial power, like the animals were killed and taken in. And then he's quite moving in his own kind of managing to exist in those spaces. And some historians and political commentators argue that Ireland's past and present, uh, has, past and present uh, rather, has to be analyzed in colonial terms, but others really reject using that label mm -hmm. of colonialism. Can you talk about I you think it? it's unavoidable that the colonial you know, narrows over the colonial, colonial thoughts or politics um, uh, needs to be applied to Ireland. And it even intersects, and in fact, I'm particularly interest, interested in how it intersects now and how that speaks to other countries and other situations and how Ireland moves forward as a, a you know, a solid EU member and that we're looking outwards beyond the edges of our island, but also have to deal with those particular histories that are really only 50 to 100 years old old, which in, you know, history in some terms is quite short, actually. Yeah, do you feel that that history has been dealt with? Um, I think it's a process, and I think it's an ongoing process that, yes, and then it's still ongoing in terms of different degrees of social change that are happening in Ireland now, and again, I'm certainly interested in that, and monuments are making my own sculptures as monuments. So it, it's almost a never-ending, to me, a responsibility that we keep on thinking about these things, because as we encounter people from other places, we also need to take that generosity forward. And one of your artworks references uh, Michael Collins, the Irish revolutionary and politician and a mm -hmm. leading figure in the early 20th century struggle for independence. He was held up by some as a hero, uh, but others saw him as a traitor. How mm -hmm. do you convey that duality? Um, I, I'm interested in holding those two spaces together so that as soon as you say Michael Collins, for those that would know him of him, of him as a figurehead, that duality is, is apparent. Um, within the sculpture, I've taken a bronze copy of his nose, as it exists in another monument in Dublin, and had that separated out from the rest of the body with a malacca sticks and a bronze brick. So it's reversing a, a, a more ancient tradition of knocking the noses off statue and taking away the power, but taking that into my own kind of remaking of that story. Um, and I think people recognize that this is of a monument, even if you don't know Michael Collins, and then the Michael Collins story comes in underneath that. And in so many places where there's historic conflict, including uh, in Northern Ireland, it can be really hard to get people to kind of question their beliefs. They probably come to your work uh, with, with already a set notion mm -hmm, of what they feel. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you confront that? How do you get people to change their 
their mind. I guess the work and even this piece of work turn again, or there's a sculptural architectural piece in which kind of cuts up an exhibition space, and it was made with an architect, Peter Carroll, that it's it's kind of positioning people between works and between sculptures so that those stories are, are very much parts of materials and parts of image making, but that you're pushed in a way that you have to question your own positioning. Like, I, I'd like the work to both be capable of acting with somebody, like being an artwork, sed seducing in a way, but also doing something a little bit uncomfortable that makes you start actually t pulling apart those stories a little bit more. And the exhibition was inspired by the Belfast poet, uh, Kieran Carson. It features one of him, his poems. Uh, can you talk about what about his work moved you? Um, Kieran Carson is a Northern Ireland poet, um, recently deceased, sadly, um, who also ha had a traditional music element to his work. And he wrote very movingly and very interestingly about moving around his local city, Belfast, and how those turning around a corner or confronting one's history and one's emotional anxieties in relationship to those places was an ever-shifting concept. And again, he stood between numerous different communities and tried to hold those together in kind of an emotional and questioning space. So in reading his work, it very much reflected the things I wanted to make in sculptures and objects and videos. So I kind of feel I, a moment of recognition as much as anything else. It sounds like a very interesting exhibition. Uh, Neve McCann, thank you so much uh, you. for being with us. Just a reminder uh, to our viewers that uh, your exhibition, Hairline Crack, is on view at the Irish Cultural Center here in Paris uh, until Sunday, the 26th of March.